Good evening. Good evening, welcome. Thank you, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, welcome. Hi, good evening, teacher. Good evening, welcome. Thank you. Teacher, in this moment, I am driving, but and I need only a few minutes. Of course, no worries. Thank you, teacher. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And uh, well, today's Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. One more week and we finish the module. Imagine, time flies. Okay, first thing that we always do is to check about the platform. This is the class of tonight. This is the exercise for tonight. It's going to be very easy. You just need to click on the one that is just advantage or disadvantage, okay? And that will be, okay? We're going to check about the attendance. Ada Patricia Linares Gardames. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Wilson Nagel. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Eras. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamas. Yes. Yeah. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Maybe Coromoto Garcia de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, Good evening. 
Silvio Suleima Rodríguez de González. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Perfect. So we are going to start the class of tonight. We're going to check a video as usual, and we're going to check and then discuss, give opinion about it. So, and uh, check, as I was telling you before, check pronunciation, check vocabulary, the jokes. Let's see if we understand the jokes this time. And of course, the main topic, so we can discuss and provide opinion. So, here we go. There are problems in the
Hello, so you cannot hear and I was not able to, I guess there was a problem with Zoom. But let me just check something very quickly because I was not able to go back. Let me just see here, it was kind of strange. It was like frozen, let me see here now. Okay, let's give it a shot. I will play it and let me know if you can hear this time. Can you hear? Yes, teacher. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was a problem here. Okay, let's check it out then. So, uh, anyone who's been paying attention for the last few months uh, has been seeing headlines like this, especially in education. Uh, the thesis has been students are going to be using chat GPT and other forms of AI to cheat, do their assignments, they're not going to learn, and it's going to completely undermine education as we know it. Now, what I'm going to argue today is not only are there ways to mitigate all of that, if we put the right guardrails, we do the right things, we can mitigate it, but I think we're at the cusp of using AI for probably the biggest trans positive transformation that education has ever seen. And the way we're going to do that is by giving every student on the planet an artificially intelligent but amazing personal tutor. And we're going to give every teacher on the planet a, an amazing artificially intelligent teaching assistant. And just to appreciate how big of a deal it would be to give everyone a personal tutor, I show you this clip from Benjamin Bloom's 1984 Two Sigma study, or he called it the Two Sigma problem. The two sigma comes from two standard deviations, sigma the symbol for standard deviation. And he had good data that showed that, look, in a normal distribution, that's the one that you see in the, the, the traditional bell curve right in the middle, that's how you know, the world kind of sorts itself out, that if you were to give personal one-to-one -one tu tutoring for students, that you can actually get a distribution that looks like that right. It says tutorial one-to-one -one with the asterisks, like that right distribution, a two standard deviation improvement. Just to put that in plain language, that could take your average student and turn them into an exceptional student. It can take your below average student and turn them into an above average student. Now, the reason why he framed it as a problem was he said, well, this is all good, but how do you actually scale group instruction this way? How do you actually give it to everyone in an economic way? What I'm about to show you is, I think, the first moves towards doing that. Obviously, we've been trying to approximate it in some way at Khan Academy for over a decade now. But I think we're at the cusp of accelerating it dramatically. I'm going to show you the early stages of what RAI, which we call Conmigo, what it can now do, and maybe a little bit of where it is actually going. So this right over here is a traditional exercise that you or many of your children might have seen on Khan Academy. But what's new is uh, that little, little bot thing at the right. And we'll start by seeing uh, one of the very important safeguards, which is the conversation is recorded and viewable by your teacher. It's moderated actually by a second AI. And also, it does not tell you the answer. It is not a cheating tool. Notice, when the student says, tell me the answer, it says, I'm your tutor. What do you think is the next step for solving the problem? Now, if the student makes a mistake, and this will surprise people who think large language models are not good at mathematics, notice, not only does it notice the mistake, it asks the student to explain their reasoning, but it's actually doing what I would say not just even an average tutor would do, but an excellent tutor would do. It's actually, it's able to divine what is probably the misconception in that student's mind, that they probably didn't use the distributive properly. Remember, we need to distribute the negative two to both the nine and the two M inside of the parentheses. This to me is a very, very, very big deal. And it's not just in math. This is a computer programming exercise on Khan Academy where the student needs to make uh, the clouds part. And so we can see the student starts defining a variable, left x minus minus. It only made the left cloud part, but then they can ask Khan Migo, what's going on? Why is only the left cloud moving? And it understands the code. It knows all the context of what the student is doing. And it understands that those ellipses are there to draw clouds, which I think is kind of mind blowing. And it says, to make the right cloud boot as well, try adding a line of code inside the draw function that increments the right x variable by one pixel in each frame. Now, th this one is maybe even more amazing because we have a lot of math teachers. We've all been trying to teach the world to code, but there aren't a lot of computing teachers out there. And what you just saw, even when I'm tutoring my kids when they're learning to code, I can't help them this well, this fast. This is really going to be a super tutor. 
And it's not just exercises, it understands what you're watching. It understands the context of your video. It can answer the age-old question, why do I need to learn this? And it asks Socratically, well, what do you care about? And let's say the student says, I want to be a professional athlete. And it says, well, learning about the size of cells, which is what this video is about, that could be really useful for understanding nutrition and how your body works, etc. It can answer questions, it can quiz you, it can connect it to other ideas. You can now ask as many questions of a video as, as you could ever dream of. So another big shortage out there, I remember the high school I went to, the student to guidance counselor ratio was about 200 or 300 to 1. A lot of the country, it's worse than that. We can use Conmigo to give every student a guidance counselor, academic coach, career coach, life coach, which is exactly what you see right over here. And this is all, you know, we, we launched this with the GPT-4 launch. We have a few thousand people on this. This isn't a fake demo. This is, this is really it in, in action. And then there's... Uh, you, you know, things that I think it would have been even hard, it, it, it would have been a little science fiction to do with even a traditional tutor. There's a student, we run an online high school with Arizona State University called Khan World School, and we have a student who attends that online school uh, based in India, her name is Sanvi, and she was doing a report on The Great Gatsby. And when she was reading The Great Gatsby, Jay Gatsby keeps looking at the green light off into the distance. And she's like, well, why does he do that? She did some web searches, and People have obviously studied this and commented about the symbolism of that, but none of it was really resonating with her. And then she realized that she had Conmigo and that she could talk to Jay Gatsby himself. And so, ah, splendid choice, old sport. I am now Jay Gatsby, the enigmatic millionaire from F. Scott Gerald's classic. And so why do you keep staring at the green light? Ah, the green light, old sport. It's a symbol of my dreams and desires, you see. It's situated at the end of Daisy Buchanan's dock, across the bay from my mansion, I gaze at it longingly as it represents my yearning for the past and my hope to reunite with Daisy, the love of my life. And what was cool is, Sanfi had said, I had this long conversation. She called him Mr. Gatsby. And at the end, she actually apologized for taking his time, <laughs> which I thought was very polite of her. But you can imagine, this unlocks learning literature, learning... Uh, his, you could talk to historical figures. We're even probably going to add an activity. You can talk to, like, the Mississippi River. It brings things to life in ways that, you, that really were science fiction even six months or, or a year ago. Students can get into debates with the AI. And we've got this here's the students debating whether we should cancel student debt. The student is against canceling student debt. And we've gotten very clear feedback. We started running it at Khan World School in our lab school uh, that we have, Khan Lab School. The students, the high school students especially, they're saying this is amazing to be able to fine-tune my arguments without fearing judgment, it makes me that much more confident to kind of go into the classroom and really participate. And we all know that Socratic dialogue debate is one, a great way to learn, but frankly, it's not, it's not out there for mo most students, but now it can be accessible to hopefully everyone. A lot of the narrative, we saw that in the headlines, has been, it's going to do the writing for kids, kids are not going to learn to write, but we are showing that there's ways that the AI doesn't write for you, it writes with you. So this is a, a little thing, and my eight-year-old is addicted to this, and he's not a kid that really liked writing before, but where, uh, you know, you could say, I want to write a horror story. And it says, ooh, a horror story, how spine-tingling and thrilling. Let's dive into the world of eerie shadows and chilling mysteries. And this is an activity where the student will write two sentences, and then the AI will write two sentences. And so they collaborate together uh, on a story. The students write, Beatrice was a misunderstood ghost. She wanted to make friends, but kept scaring them by accident. And the AI says, poor Beatrice, a lonely spirit yearning for companionship. One day she stumbled upon an old abandoned mansion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I encourage you all to, you know, hopefully one day try this. This is surprisingly fun. Now, to even more directly hit this use case, and what I'm about to show you, everything I showed you so far is actually all part, already part of Conmigo. What I'm about to show you, we haven't shown to anyone yet. Uh, this is a prototype. We hope to be able to launch it in the next few months. But this is to directly use AI, use generative AI, to not undermine English and language arts, but to actually enhance it in ways that we couldn't have even conceived of even a year ago. This is reading comprehension, the students reading Steve Jobs' famous uh, uh, speech at Stanford. And then as they get to certain points, they can click on that little question, and the AI will then Socratically, almost like an oral exam, 
ask the student about things, and the AI can highlight parts of the passage. Why did the author use that word? What was their intent? Does it back up their argument? They can start to do stuff that, once again, we never had the, the capability to give everyone a tutor, everyone a writing coach to actually dig into reading at this level. And you could go on the other side of it. Uh, we have a whole workflow that helps them write, helps them be a, write, a writing coach, draw an outline. But once a student actually uh, constructs a draft, and this is where they are, they're constructing a draft, they can ask for feedback, once again, as you would expect from a good writing coach. In this case, the student will say, uh, let's say, does my evidence support my claim? And then the AI not only is able to get feedback, but it's able to highlight certain parts of the passage. It says, you know, on this passage, this doesn't quite support your claim, but once again, Socratically says, can you tell us why? So it's pulling the student, it's making them a better writer, giving them far more feedback than they've ever been able to, to actually get before. And we think this is going to dramatically accelerate writing, not hurt it. Now, everything I've talked about so far is for the student, but we think this could be equally as powerful for the teacher to drive more personalized education and, frankly, save time and energy for themselves and for their students. So this is an American history exercise on Khan Academy. It's a question about the Spanish-American, oh, sorry, the uh, yeah, Spanish-American War. And um, at first, it's in student mode. And if you say, tell me the answer, it's not going to tell the answer. It's going to go into tutoring mode. But that little toggle, which teachers have access to, they can turn student mode off. And then it goes into teacher mode. And what this does is it turns into, uh, you could view it as a teacher's guide on steroids. Not only can it explain the answer, it can explain how you might want to teach it. It can help prepare the, the teacher for that material. It can help them create lesson plans, as you could see uh, doing right there. It'll eventually help them create progress reports, help them uh, eventually grade. So once again, teachers spend about half their time with this type of activity, lesson planning. All of that energy can go back to them or go back to human interactions with their actual students. So, uh, you know, one point I want to make, these large language models are so powerful, there's a temptation to say, like, well, all these people are just going to slap them onto their websites, and it kind of turns the applications themselves into, into commodities. And what I got to tell you is I kind of thought that that's one of the reasons why I didn't sleep for two weeks when I, when I first had access to uh, GPT-4 back in August. But we quickly realized that to actually make it magical, I think what you saw with Conmigo a little bit, it didn't interact with you the way that you see ChatGPT interacting. It was a little bit more magical, it was more Socratic, it was clearly much better at math than what most people are used to, to thinking. And the reason is there was a lot of work behind the scenes to make that happen. And I could go through the whole list of everything we've been working on, many, many people for over six, seven months to make it feel uh, magical, uh, but what, perhaps the most intellectually interesting one is we realized, and this was an idea from an open AI researcher, that we could dramatically improve its ability in math and its ability in tutoring if we allowed the AI to think before it speaks. So if you're tutoring someone and you immediately just ta start talking before you assess their math, you might not get it right. But if you construct thoughts for yourself, and what you see on the right there is an actual AI thought, something that it generates for itself but it does not share with the student, then its accuracy went up dramatically, and its ability to be a, a world-class tutor went up dramatically. And you can see it's talking to itself here. It says, the student got a different answer than I did, but do not tell them they made a mistake. Instead, ask them to play, explain how they got to that, that step. So I'll just finish off. Hopefully, you know, what I've just shown you is just half of what we are working on, and we think is, this is just the very tip of the iceberg of where this, this can actually go. And I'm pretty convinced, which I wouldn't have been even a year ago, that we together have a chance of addressing the Two Sigma problem and turning it into a Two Sigma opportunity, dramatically accelerating uh, education as, as we know it. Now, just to take a step back at a meta level, obviously we heard a lot today, the debates on either side. There's folks who uh, take a more pessimistic view of AI. They say, this is scary. There's all these dystopian scenarios. We maybe want, want to slow down. We, we want to pause. On the other side, there are the more optimistic folks who say, well, we've gone through inflection points before. We've gone through the Industrial Revolution. It was scary, but it all kind of worked out. And what I'd argue right now is I don't think this is like a flip of a coin or this is something where we'll just have to like wait and see which way it turns out. I think everyone here and beyond, we are active participants in this decision. I'm pretty convinced that the first line of reasoning is actually almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, that if we act with fear 
And if we say, hey, we just got to stop doing this stuff, what's really going to happen is the rule followers might pause, might slow down, but the rule breakers, as Alexander mentioned, the totalitarian governments, the criminal organizations, they're only going to accelerate. And that leads to what I am pretty convinced is the dystopian state, which is the good actors have worse AIs than the bad actors. But I'll also you know, uh, talk to the optimists a little bit. I don't think that means that, oh yeah, then we should just relax and just hope for the best. That might not happen either. I think all of us together have to fight like hell to make sure that we put the guardrails, we put in, when, it, when the problems arise, reasonable regulations, but we fight like hell for the positive use cases. Because very close to my heart, and obviously there's many potential positive use cases, but perhaps the most powerful use case, and perhaps the most poetic use case, is if AI, artificial intelligence, can be used to enhance HI, human intelligence, human potential, and human purpose. Thank you. Okay, what did you get from the video? In a few words, if I I uh, I read the, the title of the video, how IA could save, not destroy education. And I try to understand. And he showed the the chat PG application and I understand that Nowadays, uh, students uh, use this application to to lead on uh, the, the to lead on the the homework at school, and in a in a better way, I think is it's okay to to help. Uh, to try to understand the problem, not to resolve them or the problem. And I think that also nowadays there are calculators that made the graphics. In in my time when I was a student, <laughs> I don't have a, a calculator, but I but maybe it exists, but I can't afford it for a calculator that makes me the graphic or something. Imagine nowadays using uh, the AE with those applications that you you can you can make a question and in the the program can can answer you. I think that IA um, is is not destroying the education. I think that is helping the the younger people also. If I study at the university, maybe I use it too to to help me. I I think that uh, at the end the AA is not not so bad that uh, many people uh, can can think about it. I don't know. Okay, very good. Perfect. This is, Thank I you. Think, this is that I I understand. <laughs> okay. I think Thank it you. is it is very. Uh, interesting and, and very uh, up to date now uh, that talk about AA and uh, I have understood that we don't need to have a ca catastrophic, catastrophic approach about, about what can AA a doing for destroying education more uh, we 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 need to learn all the opportunities that AA represent, you know, for to have a better quality and a better effective education, and it is all a matter of how are you, um, how the education system are thinking now to prepare, to train the teachers, the schools, you know, because 
You know, my both daughters uh, went to the German school here in San Salvador. And the German school was very, very old uh, oriented in matters of technology, you know? Uh, the British school and American school and French school, they have had all computers uh, integrated, you know, uh, IT integrated in the classroom and the German school, no, you know. Many years after all the schools have in introduced it, uh, came the German school with this approach of IT by learning. And you know, now I think it's everything is more accelerating and everyone that have a cell phone, it, it will be able to access to AI. And it is only a question of how quickly we, the adults, the pub, the education system can uh, introduce the, the students to use the right way, the, the uh, intelli artificial intelligence, you know? But I think it, 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 ha it would have a lot of opportunities for the teachers and for the students, you know? And for all the education systems and in every level. I agree that it, it, it can, it, it would, uh, we would have more benefits than disadvantage or negative effects. Okay, very good. Thank you, my best. So it's interesting, right? Because, I mean, uh, by now, uh, he can show many things that you can do. I mean, for ChatGPT, for example, all the code that you can create and correct. So uh, without that one, sometimes the uh, people that are working in that kind of things, they have to spend uh, days trying to check what is going to be the correct way. Now it is much easier. So yes, there are many things, but also there are a lot of people that are afraid of this approach of artificial intelligence because of many things. I mean, not only because what we have seen in the movie is that they destroy the humanity, uh, but maybe because of the employees, right? I mean, the employment might be different. Many things can come down and people are afraid. Uh, I was reading, for example, I don't remember where, that uh, one of the one of the uh, professions that are going to disappear in the future are teachers. I mean, that you are going to go and learn things you know, with an artificial intelligence. They are going to correct you and things like that one. So, uh, yes, at the moment when I read that one, it was, oh, my goodness, I, I really love to teach, right? But what, what am I going to do? But it's not that easy. I mean, governments also they are not going to permit that something bad happen. We believe, right? Because <laughs> that's what we think. So Eric, it, it is it was the meaning of dystopian effect. Dystopian? Yeah. This this uh, 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 to be afraid of the effects of the AA. This was in the education. Dystopian? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something like that, no? It's yeah, it's utopia. something that is, is not working properly. Uh, it's the opposite of a utopia. Utopia is when everything is amazing, working properly. Okay, so, uh, but I mean, it's a very interesting topic. Maybe the real problem is that by now we can only ex speculate, right? We can only think, imagine what can happen. So the time is going to, to tell us what teacher. is going to happen? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, teacher. Um, in my opinion, um, I agree that the the technology in general um, has more benefits in, for this, the education system, educational system. Education. But I believe that it's necessary to update our programs of the our system because um, now 
the the new uh, program, for example, the chat GTP, um, the, the system of evaluation in our uh, programs require, for example, a evaluation test, uh, a specific test writing, for example, or reduction or specific essay. But now it's important to evaluate the other way, the other skill. In the personal, I believe that um, the educators, we need to update the different, uh, uh, different ways for improve the, the system of the programs because the programs, uh, they are, how do you say, the facade feature? Uh, not updated. Not updated in a specific programs. In, in, all, in all level teacher, for example, in the university, there are a specific student that the pencil is 15 years ago, the, it, it's not right because in 15 years, uh, the life changed. Only the three years ago, teacher, our life changed. This is hey. my opinion. That's it. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So, Joas, go ahead. It's a, it's a, a great video. I love how they artificial intelligence assist assistant for student. However, I worry that in the future, the educa educational systems will use uh, artificial intelligence in, instead of hearing teachers because it's more cost effective. For example, now you find uh, in Google, for example, to program that you uh, say how to do a pivot table. And you find a program that, that by artificial intelligence uh, that do your pivot table, for example, you don't need to how um, you don't need how how the knowledge to the pivot table, for example. So yeah, that is true. Uh, definitely, it's going to be an impact. I mean, we have seen that in the past, right? We have seen that uh, some people probably is not everybody, but some people, uh, they use the tools and that's it. They don't understand how things work, how things happen. They don't calculate themselves. They don't uh, write themselves. I mean, for example, I don't know if you remember that one. When internet came, uh, a lot of people, they just went, copy and paste the homework and then present it like that one. So that was good. Uh, but there were also other people that they really studied, they really created the content. They went to the internet to read and learn and then present something. So we are going to have, of course, the same here, both ways. So depending on the users, depending on many things, regulations, I know, uh, is going to be the impact. So I believe that that is why a lot of people is afraid of this, because we have seen uh, many things in the past. For example, again, on the internet, uh, I believe that before, a long time ago, when this was starting, a lot of people, they thought that everybody was going to be intellectual, reading, understanding, learning lots of things. But you see now, for example, influencers, right? That they, uh, I don't know, like a, a month ago, it was a piece of news that the influencers, they were going to cover the news there in the assembly here in El Salvador. And a lot of uh, journalists, they were not happy about that one because they went to the university five, six years to learn 
techniques and many things. Uh, and the other, just because they're famous and they're popular, they just had the permission to go and cover things. They were not happy. So those are the kinds of things that sometimes uh, people are afraid of, right? Because we have seen things in the past. And because, I mean, the government, yeah, is supposed that they need to protect. But if something is popular, remember that they, they want to win an election. They want to, to continue with many other things that they want to do. So everything is linked, right? Uh, so that, I believe, is the real issue. How is going to handle that one if, I mean, the regulation is not there, people are taking advantages, I mean, Many things has to be spoken on this one. And the problem is that that should be done right now. We don't have to wait to, to happen something strange or something bad. So that is probably the real. But what he said in the video actually is very good. That is a, a very positive expectation, right? Yes, I mean, we have tools. We have ways to, to learn more, to be more efficient, right? To do things faster. So that is amazing. So technology is doing that a lot. Any other comment on the video or on the topic that we're discussing? Uh, uh, um, I share with you that they are artificial intelligence is likely to replace many teachers in the future, for example. For example, in my company, Many processes have been replaced by uh, robot time programs. They are not excellent, but they have already replaced work space. It's a real reality. So that is true. I mean, it's happening. As I was telling you, I mean, this is not, I mind what Carla said, that in her company, they already remove people from the jobs so it's not something that might happen it's something that is happening probably not everybody's going to to, to get fired i mean that would be a huge impact and as you say also the ia uh, is not so powerful that they are actually going to do uh, things by themselves like a thing like that one so for example i was reading as well that uh, in the u.s i guess in the u.s there was a mcdonald's where uh, it was attended only, everything is done by robots. I don't know, have you seen that one? Everything. There are no humans in the whole place, no humans at all. So this is like uh, something that they do to, to get the attention or things. That, but, but if that works, I mean, and if the humans, they do mistakes, uh, they come late to work, they get sick and they have to stay at, at home three, four days. Companies, because of the money, they might think, right, well, why don't we invest money in these things and, I mean, get rid of these problems, right? So it's, it's a very, very interesting topic. You know, uh, we can debate here all the classes. And at the end, we, I mean, we will find, we will find good things and bad things as in everything. What is going to happen? We don't know. We expect for the future. We we need to wait. We hope. We all are going to be fine, right? Let's see what happens. Eric, but it is it is also important for us. I so we are every every one of us are uh, not too junk, and uh, AI rep, uh, represent for us a big challenge how to keep ourselves updated in the labor market so and you know uh, it is like uh, yesterday with the video about solving problems i mean every one of us need to think about what are, i am going to do to maintain myself updated in the labor market or with demand because uh, one thing is true that everything is, is happening too fast. And then I cannot wait. It is not like 20 years ago that, that I, I could wait uh, for five years to, to learn 
uh, Excel or, or my or office. No, 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 no. It is very important that every one of us, if we want or we expect to maintain ourselves uh, in the labor market at a very good demand, that we, we need to start also uh, updating our knowledge, you know? It is the same Thanks. with the languages. It is the same with the languages, you know? And yeah, we, we need to learn English because it, it is a must. It is no 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 different answer. We, we must. And it is also with AIT. I, I don't know if it is only a question of uh, artificial intelligence or more IT. We need to, to keep very uh, uh, us very updated with IT in general. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, uh, regardless on what is going to happen, we don't know what's going to happen. But regardless of that one, we need to learn. Uh, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm taking a course for uh, artificial intelligence at work to be ready. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's kind of strange because, for example, there at Google where we work, uh, they forbid to use ChatGPT, for example, because nothing is for free, right? Something that we discussed, I believe, a few models before. Uh, if you use that one, it's taking, it's taking your information, right? So like when you download an application for pictures and they are taking information, from you. nothing is for free here in this world, right? So, and they get our data and they sell our data so everybody understands better what people want in certain age, I mean, marketing, we are marketing. So uh, that is something that happened at Google. They say, nobody has to use ChatGPT. It's forbidden. We need to analyze. We need to know what's going on here, right? So I was using that one and checking some things and then I say, okay, I'm not going to use that anymore, right? Something's going on. And remember that these people that are on the top of the companies, they know things. Right, so we need to to be careful, but also we need to learn. Definitely, I truly believe in that one that we need to move on with technology. It's the same as when the internet happens, right? Or the cell phones. Um, people they didn't like cell phones, but they had to learn how to use cell phones, how to use a computer. I mean, supercomputers are coming. They are developing computers that are going to be, I mean, monsters and that you are going to have there in your house, those little computers. I mean, these computers that we have right now using, they are much more powerful than the very first computer that helped the calculations for NASA and launched the rockets to space. I mean, and that those computers, those were very small in capacity, but they use a huge room, right? So we need to learn. We need to move on with the so that is something that definitely we have to. So take the chance and learn a little bit more about that one. Any other comments or opinion? Okay, we're going to do a little exercise. Ah, this is a good one. Okay, what we are going to do, my friends, is we're going to read. Ah, but we're going to read in a different way, okay? What we are going to try to do is to read as fast as you can. So this is going to be a fluency, a fluency, uh, let's say practice, okay? So as, as fast as you can, but the words has to be understandable, okay? So it's not like blah, 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 and that's it. Everybody has to understand words, right? So you can practice with your mind and I'm going to read it to for you to check pronunciation. So, and how it's going to be. So for example, something like this. A business can be described as an organization or enterprising entity that engages in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of businesses depending on various factors. Some are for profits and well, some not profit. Similarly, their ownership also makes them different from each other. Ah, what do you think? 
So it's fast, nice but you need exercise. <laughs> Yeah, so this is something that we can all do on your on our free time, but we're going to do it together tonight. Okay, so um, the words are not difficult. Um, I guess I mean maybe similarly, but it's not that difficult. Um, pronunciation. I don't know if you have any questions about pronunciation before we do start. Questions on pronunciation? No, I think they are. Quite, quite nice words. Okay, so I'm going to give you, let's say, two, three minutes for you to practice in your mind and check how you're going to say it, and then you are going to say it to everybody, okay? Okay, I guess that you are ready. I want to hear what you're gonna do. So let's see how it goes. Um, Maybe, let's start with you. Okay. Mm. A business can be described as an organization or enterprise, an entity that engages in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of businesses depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are non-profit. Similarly, their ownership also makes them different from each other. Very good. That was very fast. <laughs> nice. Good job. Uh, Anna, tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, teacher. <laughs> try, don't worry. I try it, but I try it. 
Okay, a business can be described as an organization or enterprise entity that's engaged in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are not profit. Similarly, their ownership also makes them different from each other. Very good, perfect. That was nice, nice. <laughs> Complicated. Sorry. Do you think? <laughs> uh, you can see, for example, in the videos that some people, they speak like that one, right? They, they speak very fast and things like that one. But we can do that one. We just need to practice, all right? All right, Carla Vasquez is the next one. <clears throat> okay. Um, a business can be described as an organization or enterprise identity that engages in professional, commercial, or industrial activity. There are, can be different styles of business depending on various factors. Some are the profile, while some are not profile. Similarly, they ownership also make they different from each other. Very good. That was very nice. Very fast. Good, good. Now we're going to listen to Susana Beatriz. Next, teacher. <laughs> you are next. <laughs> next, teacher. <laughs> try, try. Don't worry. Don't worry if you do mistakes on pronunciation or anything. Don't worry. Just try. Okay, well, as we think I'll be described on the organization or enterprise entity that English in professional, commercial, or industrial activity. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are or for profit and will some are not profit. Similarly, their ownership also make their different from each other. Very good. So as you see, you can do it. Very nice. <laughs> now, uh, Susana Hernandez. Okay. A business can be described as an organization or enterprising entity that engages in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are not profit. Similarly, the ownership also makes them different from each other. Amazing. This was amazing. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Now is the turn of Rosa Elena. After listening to Susana, oh my God. <laughs> you can do it. A bit, yes. A business can be described as an organization or enterprise entity that engage in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are profit, while some are not profit. Similarly, the ownership also makes them different from each other. Okay, very good. So you see, you can do it. Very nice. <laughs> Now, let's listen to Manuel Antonio. Hey, teacher. Business can be described as an organization or, or enterprise entity that's engaged in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are non-profit. Similarly, the ownership also makes them different from each other. Very good, perfect. That was very fast and good pronunciation. Very good. Uh, Gloria Elizabeth. Hi, teacher. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, very well, where are we? I <laughs> but I try. Of course. A, a business can be described as an organization or enterprise entity that engage in professional commercial or industrial activities. There are the, 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 the different type of business depending on various factors. Some are the profit, why some are not profit. Similar days, ownerships also make them different from each other. Okay, very good, very nice, good, good. So now is the time for Walter Mauricio. Okay, a business can be described as an organization or interpreting identity today engaged on professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of the business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are not profit. Similar, their oxygen also make it different from each other. 
Okay, very good, very fast. That was very nice. Uh, let's see who's next. Uh, Maria Elena. Okay, a business can be described as an as organization or enterprise an entity that engage in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are profits, will have, some are not profits, similar to their own chips, all makes them different from each other. Okay, very good. That was also very fast, very nice. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Wendy Maribel. It's impossible for me. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. You can do it. I don't I don't nothing. Nothing can fast. <laughs> nothing do well, fast. <laughs> do nothing. it the fast that you can do it. So it's my self form. <laughs> <laughs> a business can be described as an organizational interesting entity that engaging professional, commercial, or industrial activities, there can be different types of businesses depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are not profit. Similarly, their ownership also makes them different from each other. As you can see that you can do it. Very nice. Okay, perfect. Let's see Adriana Stephanie. Okay, teacher. A business can be described as an organization or enterprising entity that engages this in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are no profit. Similarly, their ownership also makes them different for each other. Very good, very nice, very fast. Now we're going to listen to Silvia Suleima. Okay, good evening. Mm -hmm. um, a business can be described as an organization or enterprising entity that engages in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are non-profit. Similarly, their ownership um also make them different from each other okay very good perfect nice let's see uh, patricia linares okay a business can be described as an organization and enterprising entity that engages in professional commercial or industrial activities there can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are profit, while some are not profit. Similarly, their ownership also makes them different from each other. Very good, very nice. Let's check about Edwin Alexander. A business can be described as an organization or enterprising entity that engages in professional, commercial, or industrial activities. There can be different types of business depending on various factors. Some are for profit, while some are not profit. Similarly, their the ownership also makes the difference from each other. Very good, amazing. That is very fast, very good pronunciation. Nice. Uh, let's see, uh, Mario Villeda. Is it possible for you? Okay, so I guess everybody did it, right? Is anybody missing? I don't think so. Okay, well, this is a very good exercise. I mean, um, sometimes uh, um, we need to we need to learn different things, not only just pronunciation, not only about vocabulary, but so, uh, we need to speak a little bit more fluent. So this is something that you can try to do. Uh, check first the pronunciation of the words. I know that some words might be difficult. And uh, I mean, try something, something not that difficult first, and then you can uh, speed up the level. So there are many exercises that you can do so you can improve your English. And this is one of that that is, is going to be very easy. Do you have any questions about this? No questions, good. So 
we are going to stop a little bit and we're going to check second video so we can discuss about it. this is shorter than the other one so let's check and then uh, as usual check and tell me what you understood uh, your comments your opinions vocabulary check also the way that they speak so uh, whenever we listen to other people uh, it's very interesting because you will see that they have different accent different speed when you speak i mean there are people that they speak very slow they try to speak like this but there are some other people that they are going to start speaking and you have to follow them because if you don't follow them you are going to lose track so it's very important for you to check many things whenever we see a video so let's see this one In 2018, I had what I call a powerful first experience. At 31 years old, I made my first snow angel. Now that may not sound powerful to some of you, but for me, it was. And so how do you get from New York City to Montana? Well, you have to have a horse. I don't make the rules, but not having a horse is why so many people don't make it out there. I'm kidding. I was actually invited to attend and speak at a conference in Big Sky. I'm a kid from the Bronx, so I knew nothing about Big Sky. I knew nothing about Montana. In fact, I had only recognized images similar to it as the screensaver that comes on whenever my MacBook goes idle. I landed in Bozeman, and the first thing I did was thank God, because I don't like flying, even though I have to do it often. I walked out of the airport, and I saw no skyscrapers, no lines of cabs, no people yelling and arguing, and there were no funny smells that I was familiar with. You know, all the things that make NYC amazing. So fast forward, I'm in the passenger seat of the car and I'm looking out the window and I'm just taking on the views. Mountains covered in snow, trees everywhere. And at one point, we passed by these homes that had to be worth millions of dollars because they had the most beautiful view of the environment. Later the next day, as I'm getting off stage from speaking, a woman comes up to me and she asks, would you like to go on a hike? Now I'm from New York City, so a hike is a few city blocks. New York City is at sea level, so we're talking about real oxygen, so no. This was a hike. And at 8,000 feet elevation, one quickly realizes Montana's oxygen just isn't real. <laughs> Midway through our hike, I can't remember what I said, but the woman grabs a fistful of snow, puts it in her mouth, and she starts to chew. And my initial thought was, that was disgusting. I would never touch anything that touches a New York City street. But then I realized this was snow from Montana, and this was symbolic of the relationships Montanans have with their environment. So towards the end of the hike, this woman lays down in a bed of snow, and she moves her body in a way where it registers to me she's making a snow angel. So after about 30 seconds, I decide to mimic. And so I lay in this fresh bed of snow in Montana, I move my arms and my legs, and then it dawns on me, I'm making a snow angel for the first time. And of course, I've seen other people do it, and I've seen it on television before, but it was the first time I did it. You see, I've coined the term powerful first experiences, or PFEs, as doing something you never thought you would do for the first time in a place that you never thought you would be in for the first time. The main reason why I was in Montana in the first place was to give a talk about powerful first experiences, so it's only right that I would then have powerful first experiences in Montana. Powerful first experiences are life-altering moments and experiences that change the way that we see ourselves and changes the way we see the world. And they can be as expansive as skydiving out of a plane in France or as small as visiting a lake to meditate for the first time. What matters is your imagination, your courage, and your curiosity. In the book Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath, the authors reference what psychologists call the reminiscent bump, a phenomenon where older individuals are asked to think about their experiences where they tend to disproportionately talk about the experiences that happened roughly between the ages of 15 to 30. Some researchers say this is the time in our lives where we experience the most novelty. And there's a few theories why. One, when you enter and pass through your 30s, life can seem like it speeds up, because we develop the habits of doing the same things over and over. Another reason is that there are just some experiences in our lives that are set to happen within that time frame. So think about it. By 15, you might be in high school. By 18, you may be in college. After college, you get a job. You may buy the big home, you may get married, you may have a kid, and then you might experience loss or grief. And then you enter your 30s, and that's it. No more powerful first experiences, and life repeats itself over and over. Something about that seems so unfulfilling. 
Now imagine if you're a kid from a community like the Bronx. While the Bronx offers amazing experiences, by the time you turn 14 or 15, you can feel like you've experienced all the powerful first experiences in that environment. And so I became obsessed with figuring out how to give more powerful first experiences to others. My organization, Gentlemen's Retreat, focuses on young men of color from the inner city who end up going to top colleges and universities, such as Brown University. These young men are gifted and they're special. They just felt they experienced everything the community had to offer. We call these young men G's for gentlemen. And while working with these gentlemen and giving them powerful first experiences, I realized it was shaping their identities in a positive way, but it was also increasing their cultural and their social capital. An individual has cultural capital because of the environment that they come from. The knowledge, skills, and belief of that environment can be seen as capital or an asset. And having the combination allows an individual to have economic advantages and other advantages. And when you collect powerful first experiences, you're collecting cultural capital from different environments. Social capital is a set of shared values and resources that allows individuals to come together to achieve a common goal. It can also be thought of as the ability to access resources and favors and information from your network. Countless connections are fostered when the gentlemen develop intimate relationships in places such as Paris, London, and even Montana, as they spend time with locals, entrepreneurs, and even venture capitalists. They develop a more expansive network and idea of the world. And increasing cultural and social capital doesn't just benefit the gentlemen, it also benefits the communities that they bless with their presence. And a powerful first experience changes the way you see yourself and the way you see the world. Going to Big Sky changed the way that I saw the world, the way that I saw myself and what I wanted to do in the world. Instead of waiting for my cycle of experiences to repeat themselves, doing the same things over and over, I decided to go out into the world and collect powerful first experiences. And a powerful first experience can be anything. It's all about intention. The most important part of a powerful first experience or a PFE is intention. Anyone can have them. You don't have to have capital or have started an organization. You don't even have to be a G. You just have to be thoughtful about two things. One, do something you haven't done but have always wanted to do. And what's important here, no matter what you choose to do, skydiving out of a plane, learning a new language, switching your wardrobe, whatever you decide to do has to have a certain level of risk in it for you. It's about courage. The courage to get on a plane and go to a state where most people don't look like me in order to experience something as simple as making a snow angel. Second thing, switch up your environment, change the stimuli, and please try to be bold. So you may be a singer, but maybe you sing on a crowded train in New York City or in the beautiful streets of Venice, Italy. Imagine what the world would be like if we decided to share and exchange in more powerful first experiences. Would we feel more loved? Would we feel more connected? Would we feel more brave? Most importantly, would we feel more human? Each and every one of us has so much to experience if we allow ourselves the gift of another powerful first experience. My only ask, if you decide to go to Montana for the first time, please don't forget your horse. <laughs> Thank you. What do you get from this one? Ah, oh, it is it is really a, my dream to put in my life every day some little piece of novelty. I was looking for, for the meaning of novelty and novelty means the quality of being different, new and unusual in your life. And uh, I think it is the best way to, to, to get older, you know? Uh, because if you keep this uh, powerful sense of make uh, new things every day or change your approach. How do you see the people? Actually, you don't need to go to Japan or Italy or, or, or Guatemala. 
you know, I actually you need to to decide to have a different approach about what do you see every day? The baker, your jobs, the people, the church, you know, your friends, and look always after something different, you know, that could give you more uh, more power to to live, to enjoy life. I think it is a very nice concept, you know, how to put novelty to your life and uh, um, every day to to love things in a different approach. I think it was very nice. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you for your income. So anybody else have an opinion about this? Yes, teacher. Um, I like I like it, that the video and the tech talk is specific because uh, I believe that the all people um, need to. Um, need to a reason why uh, why fight why uh, lie a live live is right teacher live live um but the novelty uh, when when in your activities you include the new activities, new goals, new projects, new the life change because require give more emotion, more um, more passion, teacher, and in general, it's healthy. Yes, that's it, teacher. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you very much for your comments. Anybody else want to share what you got from the video or opinions? Teacher, uh, in a part of the video, the gentleman mentioned it about the different things that we we can we can do and the the most uh, impact for me uh, is uh, the the first experience I remember when I had my my first my first job when somebody uh, approached me and and tell me hey, would you like to work in in X uh, company uh, I would like I say but I don't I don't uh, I have not experience and I don't know uh, what I do and then and then she uh, he uh, he told me uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can help you, and I'm going to introduce. I'm going to uh, explain that that you you need to do. And I remember when I have my my first uh, pay 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 uh, pay yes. I was surprised, and uh, I don't know about the 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 different things that I that that we we have the opportunity uh, to impact others 
or myself, the, 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 the first experience, I think is important uh, uh, most uh, mostly is if this thing can be changed can can change my environment my family my group of uh, friends uh, something like that I I understood very good perfect thank you very much uh, and yeah. yeah well we're gonna discuss that later but uh any other comments or opinion teacher these these kinds of videos are important are important not only to practice your listening but also to realize that we must have new goals new motivation uh, that we should not stand stand that we should look for new projects be better better people every single day very true so we need to start all over every day right? every day is a new opportunity okay mm -hmm. uh, any other comments Okay, so yes, it's a very interesting thing. I mean, uh, first experiences, I mean, I believe that we all have experiences that touch us, right? That we we'll always remember. So we might forget some things, but there are things that you, you will never forget, special moments. And sometimes, I mean, uh, you don't have to be in a very expensive place or anything like that. Sometimes uh, the experiences are, are different just because of the company or, or because of the landscape, things like that one. So uh, it's important to have new experiences. So uh, what, what I caught my attention on this video and that's what I brought you is because what he said, I mean, after the 30 years old, we do the same thing. I mean, if you analyze, that's what we do. I mean, we wake up in the morning, we have our daily routine at work. We go home. There are a few changes, but almost all the days are the same. On the weekends, we might change, but we have also kind of the same routines. So we need novelty. We need something new. And that is where we need to, to go back and check what are the things that we want to achieve. Our bucket list. Do you remember that we were speaking about that one? not only about things that we really want to experience. It can be a change of job. It can be, I don't know, many things. So simple things or difficult things, but we need, we need to move on and get new experiences every day if possible or whenever is possible. Because life goes on. If we don't do what we want to do, I mean, yeah, work is important and many other things are important, but we need to we need to experience those things. So um also since we're speaking about experiences, do you remember an uh, experience that you would like to share with everybody? Something that you will always remember. In my case, for example, I can tell you I have had a lot of beautiful experiences, but I will always remember the very first time that I saw my son. I mean, it was amazing. I was expecting him for a long time, and uh, I mean, but I was not ready for, for that moment, right? That I saw him, he was crying, he was healthy. He opened his eyes, and he looked at me, and I will always, always remember that time. Uh, there are many other things, but that is a very beautiful experience. I mean, I, I always remember every time on his birthday, we always remember that moment because it's a beautiful thing. Uh, amazing, amazing experiences. Okay, so what is a good experience that you want to share for the class? Anybody wants to share?
Ah, nobody wants to share today. <laughs> okay, I I want to share the first time I went to Asia. You know, I I have never imagined that I I I can go to Asia to China and you know, uh, before the the pandemic, uh, it was really uh, for me a quite uh, a quite year because I have had not too much work and suddenly to, to the lunch time came my husband and uh, she I I knew that he he had got a trip to China because he represent uh, his a uh, commercial representative from one company there and then, but nobody uh, has invited me to this trip. And then I was quite sad. And suddenly he told us, okay, my visita, you can prepare your luggage because you are coming with me. I stayed for at least uh, 15 minutes without voice, you know? because it was really a big surprise. I have never imagined that I can get the opportunity to go to China and, and the very most important thing for gratis. For free, because nice. I didn't pay anything. Yes, it was really a, one of the most beautiful experience I ever had in my life. Very good, amazing. You know, so the culture, the culture, the foods, the people, the the way they act, and so it was. It was really uh, so interesting that is it was like a dream to be there for one month. Oh, one month! That it was a long time. Very good. Yeah, it was a big time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, it's a pleasure. You know. So yeah, that sounds like a very, very good experience. I mean, I changed a lot of novelties, not only one novelty, but lots of things together, right? So that is that is amazing. That's why people, re they really love to go to other places because, I mean, uh, it's not just one experience. Like the trip, take it the plane, go to places, meet people, eat food. I mean, a lot of new things. So that is amazing. Good, anybody else wants to share? Nobody. Okay, I have another question for you. Sometimes I wonder, you know, you know that I come sometimes with crazy questions. So uh, I remember that I was thinking, what is the oldest memory that I have? The oldest one. The one that is like, I don't know. And I was remembering myself with my dad at the beach inside of the ocean, and he was carrying me. I mean, he, if he was carrying me, maybe I was very, very little. That is the oldest memory that I can remember. I don't. I, I know that we had experienced a lot of things before, but sometimes I mean the the brain, the brain uh, works like a computer, right? You have to take out things to put some other things inside again. So I don't remember anything before that. I'm not sure how old was I exactly at the time. That is the oldest memory that I have of my life. So do you remember what is the oldest memory in your life, the oldest thing that you remember that happened to you? In my, in my case, teacher, uh, my oldest uh, remember uh, like you, like you, you saw, uh, you say, uh, after that, I I don't remember what happened in my life, but in this in this case, it was it was when my when my my last brother or my uh, my little brother. Uh, uh, 
in uh, reach in, in, in peace, right? He died oh. uh, 13 years uh, ago. But when when he when when my mother uh, come to home with a a little baby uh, in her in her uh, arms, I remember I I I I, I had a, a I was I was a three years old. Yes. And that that is uh, I, I I remember because for me it's, it's interesting because I I asked for my 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 daughter she she is eighteen but uh, when I I asked her uh, for uh, all this uh, remember uh, she's. Uh, she told me I I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember but I I I I try uh, I, I take in my in myself this uh, uh, this uh, part of my life in when I uh, I was a uh, three years old. In mind that is. I mean, three yeah. years old, you were a little yeah. baby, a toddler, yeah. And, and yeah. when I, I remember also, but uh, she passed uh, when I when I had when I uh, when I was uh, five years old, the earthquake in nineteen eighty eighty six. Oh I, I yeah. Was, uh, uh, five uh, five years old. I was a little, quite, a little. You are quite young, my. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember. The many things uh, that pass uh, that happened in this uh, terif uh, terrific day or uh, uh, tragic, tragic day. Okay, that is interesting. You know, that is another memory that I have. I remember. I, I I always lived in Santa Ana. I was not in San Salvador. I remember, I don't remember the earthquake. I remember that I was coming from school. I was, I don't remember how old was I. And they were saying this, this the news, everybody was, oh okay. my goodness. Ah, okay. like I, but I remember, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I uh, thank you. I, uh, I, I remember I, I, I was in, in the, in my, oldest uh, brother, uh, sister, my oldest sister in, in her house. And suddenly uh, I, I, I felt that the walls are moving. And uh, after that, uh, I cry out that many, many people in the noted uh, your, uh, how do you say teacher, Tia? Out, out. You're out is uh, down of the uh, a lot of uh, uh, the remains of the tierra. Oh, it was like a landslide. Landslide. It was uh, tragic. Uh, in the houses uh, fall down. Uh, I remember many things that you really. <laughs> oh my my! Well, I I didn't leave that experience, but I remember. I don't know how many days passed okay. for that one, but I remember that I went with my father to San Salvador because he used to go there sometime, and I remember that they were uh, like making holes to get all the remains from the from the floor. Uh, and I remember the smells, you know, that is, as I remember, uh, I remember that is very similar to when you go to a, to a parking lot that is uh, under the buildings. It's, it's like that. The smell that I remember, it was like that. Uh, it was, it was in, impacting for me. Uh, I mean, at, at that time, I didn't realize, I just saw the big holes and the buildings crashed and 
I, I believe that it was like maybe two months after that one. It was not immediately, uh, but or three months, I don't know. Uh, but it was something that uh, I remember. I remember that the, the destruction, right? And the smell, it was, it was, it was interesting for me. And now, I, I mean, when you imagine what happened, how many lives were lost there, yes, uh, it's impacting, right? So it's, yes. it's kind of crazy. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else wants to share? What is the oldest memory that you remember? Me, teacher. Okay. Mm, I remember three oldest moments. Mm, one is with my mommy. Um, get me dressed in the morning. I in. I don't know, kinder. I don't kinder. know. I don't know how do you say kindergarten. That is and, actually German. <laughs> and she uh, as assist me, assist me uh, for my socks. Uh, it's a large socks, and I don't have a foot. She put put me the socks. Now the memory, all this memory, I, uh, my uncle, one of my uncles, uh, he died uh, a long time, many long time. And I remember uh, he said, where is the baby? <laughs> and I am um, uh, in under the table. Playing with head with him, and the other memory. My daddy always take um, a motorcycle. Always, I remember. Always take a one motorcycle <laughs> or two motorcycles, and I remember running to my daddy. And I am like it. Uh, he put me in the in the chair. I don't know <laughs> in the chair in the in the motorcycle in front here in front he <laughs> and running in the street. And I am remember. Um, I am love it. The air in my face. I am a, a little girl because he, he put me in front here, and I am a, how to say uh, in the no se causa dice el manu. Ah yeah, yeah. I, it's just not. I don't remember for that. But for more, but I have but I remember. I am um, take uh, de esa parte fuerte. Ah, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Esa me fuerte. Esa pequeña. I am a little. Very good. <laughs> nice. It's very nice. All the experiences that you had. I mean, I mean, I believe that there are things that impact our lives, and that's why we we remember things, right? I rem uh, I remember teacher when I was a child. Uh, we don't have a our own place to live. We live. We are. We live in different places, and we move in. We regularly we move in from one side to another. I remember very very well the first time in San Jacinto. Another time, in, uh, I think it was the last in La Providencia, near the zoo. And it was the last the last place because after that we moved to the to the apartment apartment that my pa that my father uh, bought in the Sacamil. And finally we have we own a uh, we own a place to live. I was six years. I remember perfectly my my little sister was born there. I remember uh, when I, when we arrived to the Sacamil, it was alone, completely alone. 
there are there isn't trees, only the buildings. It was it was um, it was very nice, and also uh, the one of the most uh, memories that that I keep with me. Oh, so <laughs> sorry, but my father died, and and I am very very happy because my father show was uh, the movie. He all the time uh, say the motto and and get my my older sister and me and went to the movies to see all the James Bond movies. <laughs> Thanks to my father, I I love it. I learned to love it James Bond movies because we went to the we went to Santa Tecla, the cine. Oh, I don't know, remember the colonial cine. I don't remember the name of the Santa Tecla uh, movie. Theater, but we went then. We went to the Cine Libertad. We went to the Cine Apollo. We went to oh my God, all the movie theaters in San Salvador uh, was a movie from James Bond. We we go to we go to to watch the movie. I, I that's uh, that's all. I have many memories when we went to the. We went to the beach, to the in in, in the bus. We take our our bags, uh, our backpack, and my father say, "Okay, we have we go to the we go to La Libertad." And we went to the uh, bus stop, uh, the two one two, <laughs> two o two, yeah, ciento dos, <laughs> and we go to La Libertad, <laughs> and we have a nice time. <laughs> Yeah, we enjoy we enjoy uh, that kind of trips uh, with my family. <laughs> that was very for me a uh, very important memories. Also, when we reunited uh, all the weekends to watch the movie, all the series in the Canal Two, uh, Bonanza or Canal Six, Bonanza, uh, the Family Ingalls, um, it's from. Uh, uh, the mission, mission impo impossible mission. Oh my God, the, the bionic woman, the bionic man. Oh my God, thanks. Uh, it was the the moments that I really appreciate. Hawaii Five O, uh, the 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 what do you say? Oh my God, all the series that. <laughs> thanks. Uh, that's the way that I I learned to watch movie and watch a uh, series. Because when I was a kid, uh, I watched it all, all the series on TV. <laughs> okay. That's, Very... that's my, my best, best memories that I keep on my heart and on my mind. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you for sharing. And uh, it's amazing, right? It's amazing. Everything that we have done, all the places where we have been, all the things that we have lived right so uh, yeah we 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 need to do that one we need to remember and also get new new experiences right uh with our families to transmit this kind of feelings to, to them that is something very very well thank you any other person wants to share okay i remember I I was three three years old in in the kindergarten. <laughs> three three years, and I remember play with uh, how do you say plastilina? Uh, oh my goodness, I don't remember. <laughs> what? Okay, play with with plastilina. <laughs> With red plastilina, I remember this, <laughs> and I remember uh, my uh, my my teacher teacher of of, of kindergarten. I give me uh, I give me a book a book, and I remember that I the history of book. 
as a child uh, a child a uh, championship in the final finally of, of the of the book <laughs> it's funny remember <laughs> <laughs> Very good, very good. So, yeah, I mean, you were three years old. You were a, a little toddler, right? So, uh, yeah, I was remembering and plastilina is clay. So you were playing with clay and uh, clay, yeah. So, play yeah, I, yeah, Play-Doh, play I remember that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't remember anything from my kindergarten. I remember that my mom used to put me orange juice and things that I want. But that's the only thing that I remember. I don't remember any other thing. So I remember some things because of the pictures, you know. When you see the pictures, you are able to see, ah, yeah, I remember that little tie and that little things. But other than that, I don't probably can do better. So but if you remember something like that, I mean, that was, you had a very good memory of that. Do anybody else wants to share? I remember, teacher, when I was uh, three or four years old, and we live in Usulután, Santa Elena, Usulután, um, because the, that family is there. Um, I remember when my Twin sister for me, we we were sick. Normally, only one was sick. And my mom shared with the the little girl sick, but my father took care of the other. In that case, I remember my father mm, couldn't cook. And always he couldn't, he cook eggs, only eggs. The three meals, eggs. <laughs> I didn't say huevos tibios. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I guess that is scrambled, scrambled eggs. Yes, a scramble is, is picados, not teacher. Something like that, yeah. It's not like no, that, but the in one this that you case, made. Boil, boil an egg. Boil, yes, boil, egg. boil <laughs> but boil. Okay. But yes, boil an egg. For my father was a good <laughs> uh, project. A good meal for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But only, only eggs, teacher. <laughs> Only eggs, <laughs> but now mm, my parents are in the heaven. Um, I this my memory is happy for me. They are yeah. my treasure, my treasure. Thank you for your attention. Oh, it's a pleasure to hear. You. Thank you for sharing. So those little moments are, are amazing, right? As I was telling you, sometimes little things, but very special things uh, that, I mean, when you were happy, it's, it's like when, when you say, it, you, have you seen that meme, right? That they say, we were happy and we didn't know, right? So watching TV uh, with the family, doing things. So that those little things are Playing the most important. The <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That those little moments are, are very good. I remember, for example, uh, I used to my 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 school was very close to my house. I mean, it was like like eight blocks. And I remember that I always was uh, on, on my way. I was taking a friend of mine, and he was always late. And he was always combing his hair, and I was like, "Hurry up, man! We're gonna be late." And we sometimes were late. I mean, now he's dead and. The memory is there, right? So uh, little things, I mean, that we were running and doing things, I mean, was was interesting. Anybody else wants to share? I I had 
uh, listening to you, uh, I remember that I 1966, I was six years old, and uh, we we have experienced an earthquake too, and we were four children, my grandmother, uh, uh, grandmother, and my mom, and I can remember that we have run upstairs to the street. And when we arrived uh, to the street, everybody was remembering how bad because of this earthquake, because we was seeing the Miss Universo Con Conquest program. It the was contest. that day. It was it was that day. A earthquake by Uni Miss Universo's uh, program. You know, Venezuelan girls. Uh, uh, she was there. Yeah? But I can remember that all the ladies were uh, telling about that, not about earthquake. And suddenly, I I got it. Okay. Okay, very good. It was a big event, teacher. Yeah, yeah right. The specific event, the universe, uh, what is the other for for us, for the Salvadorians, mm -hmm. uh, was a big event. Okay. Uh, maybe, therefore, I can only remember that, that we run upstairs and then everybody was talking about uh, Miss Universal event <laughs> hey, my my so uh, that's interesting because yes yeah, sometimes one specific event tells you exactly when that happened right so you are able to track in time and say it was this specific date and uh, this was happened so yeah another thing that happens is that when when you see something on the tv or you see something anything then you remember, ah, yes, I remember something about that day or, uh, or what was I doing there. So that is a very interesting thing. That But now, teacher, we return to the important topic because yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. we are the very, very scarce or host? Host, yeah. Host. Yeah, the host. Yeah, let's see how it goes, right? It's going to be the next year or this year. Well, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I mean, uh, lots of memories. You know, uh, sometimes it's a very good thing to remember. And uh, also, I mean, the invitation is for, for getting new experiences, right? So to tell these new experiences to, uh, to our family, to leave new experiences with them, and to go and do things. I mean, sometimes we are there. I mean, and the only thing that we need to do is to look to the sky and you will see a wonderful thing, right? So there are wonderful things around us uh, and we can enjoy. We can enjoy those. Good. Remember tomorrow, we have the two homeworks. One is the teaching that you are going to present. I mean, you are going to teach the class whatever you want to teach. And the words, two or three words that we're going to present. Also remember... Uh, that if you receive the INSA for survey, that is going to be done the last day of class, next Friday, not tomorrow, but the next, uh, together in the class, okay? Any questions for the class of tonight? Uh, sorry, teacher, is, is something that we teach or something to talk about? It, that you are going to teach, I mean, how to do something. Okay, teach to do something. Yeah, okay. so, ex or explain, I mean, maybe... I mean, you're not going to be cooking there at cake, right? So explain. <laughs> this is like this and like I'm this. Cooking and this. Explain, oh. explain what? Sorry. You're going to explain. You're going to teach to the class anything. Ah, I, I teach a class anything. Yeah, any topic that you want to teach. How, that, to, make, that will... how to make a chemical in bed. <laughs> All right, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay very good so uh i'm going to check the attendance then and then we're gonna go to bed so that is good let's see um uh, this one okay ada patricia linares galdames present teacher good 
Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Hey, we have audience there. Good. <laughs> Alejandra Michelle Hueson Najera. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Mandel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good evening. Good. Good evening. Silvia Sureima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. For you as the 101 of tonight. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a wonderful night. Rest a lot. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you Good night. tomorrow. Good night. Hello, Mario. Uh, do you have any questions or anything that you would like to check?